Hello and welcome to the Pacific Coast Auto YouTube channel. My name is Derek Weldon and today we're looking at a 1990 Nissan Skyline 4-door GTS T-Type M. This one bought from auction in Japan. It's going to be sent to the USA. Okay, so we have an RB20 inline 6-cylinder turbo engine. They put out 220 horsepower in this vehicle. It's rear-wheel drive. Being that this one's going to the USA, it's like so many of the other Skylines here in Japan. I think probably the ones that are importable to the US, nearly 90% of them are going to the US once they get sold at auction. And so the US is sucking all the R32s out of the world. Okay, so this is a little bit odd, but we have a, an engine sound coming from this engine. I'll give you a listen. And so the engine sound is accommodated by some vibrations in the engine. When we first started it up, there was no engine sound. It came in after the engine got warm, and so it's not a sound that comes in and cold. It's not a lifter sound, but I don't know exactly what it is. My recommendation is we send this car to a mechanic. They diagnose what the problem might be. And then we decide whether we go ahead and sell this at auction again, or if we go and repair whatever it is. It could just be that it's running a very light oil, but I don't really know about that. The oil did look rather light compared to your average uh, RB20 oil, but I don't know if that would be it. It kind of sounds like it's something in the head, but it doesn't sound like a valve is hitting. So I'm not entirely sure. Maybe giving the engine a run in, uh, maybe it hasn't driven for a while. Maybe that's gonna clear something up, but uh, the truth is I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so for the rest of the walk around here, let's have a look. And so, uh, oil checked out okay, oil level seemed okay. The only thing is it was a little bit thin. And then the coolant looks to be good. This car has 107,000 kilometers. And that's the weird thing, the RB20s aren't typically engines that have problems, especially not at 107,000 kilometers. We've sold so many of these. I've never actually had one that had an internal engine problem, and so I'm crossing my fingers that there is no issue with that, especially on a car that is completely stock. That's the original uh, air filter on it, original um, outlet piping, original turbo. It hasn't been highly modified. I guess all we have here is a strut tower bar and some sort of aluminum shroud so that it gets more cool air into the radiator. Okay, so I'm going to lower the uh, hood here. No signs of any rust inside the engine bay, so that's a, a big plus for one of these. And timing belt changed at 60,000 kilometers. And so that's another weird thing is if you have a timing belt that was changed <coughs> way before it was meant to be changed, then typically that's somebody who keeps good care of their car, which would lead to a less risky vehicle uh, for mechanical breakdowns. Okay, so let's go over the auction sheet here. This is the information given from the auction, and I'm going to translate for you. 1990 Skyline GTS T-Type M, 2000cc inline six-cylinder, auction grade 3.5 with an interior C, 107.753 kilometers, five-speed transmission, comes with sunroof, which is a rather rare option. And then this is an original white car, and so that's really rare for ones that are importable to the USA because uh, they, these cars started in 89, so 89, and um, 89 and most of 90, I think there were no white ones, and then there weren't very many until the later years. Okay, so KSP radiator hood panel, Fujitsu Bow exhaust, Cusco tower bar, uh, five speed manual transmission swap. So, this is an original automatic car, KYB suspension on it, and RB20 DET engine, so that's a twin cam turbo. Okay, timing belt changed at 62,431 kilometers in the year 2000. All right, original automatic transmission, changed to manual. Sunroof doesn't work. Uh, so the sunroof does work. It seals properly by the looks of it. It's tilt style, and it goes in underneath here. But when you put it in underneath, when it comes back out, you have to push the switch a couple of times because it stops when it shouldn't be stopping. And so the motor still works, but the gears aren't really pulling it in. I think giving it an oil should make it work, but the gears might be getting old and uh, useless. It says AC panel here doesn't display properly. Underside surface rust, wheels, scratch door mirrors, paint fade, various scratches, dents and repairs, interior wear and dirty. Shift panel has modification done to it. So they used the original automatic transmission shift panel and just modified it by cutting it so that you can have your gear shift, gear shift lever in the appropriate place. And dashboard comes up like so many of these other R32s. 
body here. So we have uh, paint cracks on the front bumper, A3 here and A3. Those are big scratches in those sections there. And paint peeling on the right front fender. Crack in the dash, or uh, not in the dashboard, in the windshield. I'm going to show you where these are. Got one here that's about 11 millimeters. Okay. And then there's one more over here. Right there, and this one is about seven millimeters. So both of those can be repaired by a glass shop. Okay, we have peeling paint on the roof, according to this. Now, the peeling paint on the front fender is easy to find. The roof only has a little spot right here. Okay. W3 is bad paint, and so the bad paint would be on this rear panel here. You can see it's a little bit unclear. If you really wanted to, you could get it uh, like a body shop to wet sand that down and make it look better, but it doesn't really stand out that much. We have a tiny bit of di colored disc discoloration between the panel and the door here. It's not that apparent though. It's just a little bit yellowed. I guess it would depend on the light that you have though. I wonder how the camera's picking that up compared to how my eyes do. We're getting paint cracks on the back bumper. And so the vehicle as a whole, it doesn't seem that bad. I think the auction sheet paints it to be a worse vehicle than it is. And so I think that we got this one for good value considering the price that we got it for. As with all these videos, I can't mention exactly what the price was, but a GTS-T Type M four-door of this generation, one that's uh, importable to the US, will probably run about 400,000 yen to about 1.2 million, depending on the condition with most of them landing in the 600 to 800,000 yen range, plus the costs of purchasing and then shipping. Okay, so the suspension I think is an appropriate height for the car, not too low, not too high. It seems to look pretty good. It has the original wheels on it, which are a little bit dasai these days, which is a Japanese word for not cool. But, uh, I mean, original wheels, kind of cool in the U.S. if they're the original Skyline wheels, because those wheels didn't come on anything in the USA. And they're not that, they're not that Desai. Okay, front bumper on it. Cool that this is the original front bumper. It is, especially for like a 90, 1990, or late 80s, early 90s car. Kind of cool. Nice long hood. A sunroof. The white color on the Skylines just makes me smile, because so many gunmetal ones, so many black ones, and then the white ones are really rare. Looks good. Okay, different tail lights here for the four door. They don't have the body color inserts on them. It's a little bit nice to have something that's a little bit different, and I think that the four doors are pretty popular with people these days. They have the same wheelbase as the two door, which is kind of weird. A lot of times four door will get a slightly longer wheelbase to give you more leg room. And so this one has tiny leg room inside, but you still get that short wheelbase. Short wheelbase is good for throwing the car around. Um, not as good for drifting, but it's not it's not like an 8.6 with a super super micro wheelbase that makes it difficult to drift. Okay, so projector headlights, standard fog lights. In the um, it comes in together, I think. Uh, am I right about that? I might be wrong. But it doesn't have any fog lights down here. There are some of them that do have some, but I think there's a fog light that's in integrated into that as a combination. Then marker here. Here's peeling paint here, and peeling paint back here. Okay, fade here. And we got a slight cracking in here. All right, going into the car now. Door cards are in pretty good shape. You've got a couple of small tears right here. Steering wheel is original. It's so nice to find an original steering wheel in good shape like this one. I love the original G, uh, Skyline GTS steering wheel. Especially when they're in good condition too because they're kind of soft. And so it's a good feel. Fog lights, yes, I'm right. Okay, blue gauges here. Dashboard has a little bit of lift, you can see there. There's also a ridge up here, 
take a look. Which is also something that they do. This bubble up here is very common on these, as is another bubble right here. Okay. So, being a transmission swap, you get the transmission selector uh, display here. As well, this has been cut, you can see there. And there's some noise that comes in through here because the proper plate and like uh, shroud is missing. So you get road noise coming in from there. If you take the boot off, you can probably see the street, I would imagine. Okay, regular pedals in there. Carpets are in good condition. Seats are in good condition. No bad smell inside. A little bit dirty sunroof liner there. Back seats are itty bitty. Okay, not much else to say about that. And into the trunk. Trunk liner's in really good shape. And no signs of any rust inside there. Okay. So overall, I would say condition, you know, it's not the best condition. I think good value for money for this one. And that's the thing is uh, with conditions of these Skylines, there's always going to be someone that wants to buy one no matter what the condition is because Skylines are just awesome cars. Whether you're going to take a, a destroyed one and turn it into a race car or you're going to take one like this and just put a little bit of money in and turn it into a really nice daily driver type car. So... Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. Once again, this is Pacific Coast Auto's YouTube channel. You can check out our website. There's a link to that in the description. Also, feel free to comment as much as you want. So thanks a lot for watching, and have a nice day.